Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King 3 And today I'm going to be giving you part 6 of What If Naruto Was Exile from the Asusuke Clan Remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual Share this to all of your friends in your social media platform And also guys Go ahead and check out the brand new episode of What If Naruto Was put through hell and adopted by the Raikage Over an Anime King 2 and remember if you're new and this is the first time you hear my voice and you enjoy the videos on both Anime King, Anime King 2, Anime King 3 Go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become part of the Anime King family And thank you for all of your help and your support and yeah Without further ado, you would you say begin this new episode Start the intro So the last time we left off Zetsu had told the other members, the other Kagis, what was happening. The room had consisted of Onki, the Mizukagi and the Raikagi. As Zetsu told them that this Naruto Uzumaki was far more powerful than he let on. And not to mention when they do crush Uzu, that Konoha would be greatly weakened by losing one of their greatest allies. So the Kagis agreed. Naruto had returned back to the land, as he was unable to find the flower. Time had passed. The more time passed, the sicker she got, as Naruto was being affected rather badly. After all, Asuskis were never ones to have sappy emotions. They never, well, fully show emotions like love, grief, sadness. There was anger and rage, but never those sappy emotions, so this was all new to him and it was just painful. But he promised her that he will find it. As she slipped into a coma. As her body was getting weaker and weaker, she started slipping to them in and out. As he made his way. After all, she was close to giving birth and if she does, he wasn't sure if she was going to make it. As Takashi told Naruto that everything would be fine, that he would watch over her and keep everything safe. As Naruto flew to the other side of the world. Meanwhile, Danzo knew what was going to happen. But he knew that Hiruzen, despite him being angry at Naruto, would never, he would never allow the Uzumakis to fall, so Danzo made his own plan as he sent his root agents. Zetsu was able to sneak inside the village as he bombed the central area where all the seals were activated. As Zetsu destroyed the tunnels so none of them could leave. As the onslaught when the boats started to arrive happened, the Jinjuliki is releasing massive amounts of engines destroying the land. Danzo forces were able to get just one person, and it was a leader, it was Kushina, while she was pregnant. As they brought her back, their master will have a newborn Uzumaki that he can fully develop as he wish, because she will have no mindset, no previous memories. So they took her, and the onslaught and Oza continued. As the village was destroyed, the people were slaughtered down to the last man. As the people tried to gain the information that Oza had, the secret on your ceiling, but they could not because everything was sealed away in the vault. Not even Zetsu could go down there, as the place was highly secured. As Naruto finally found it, he found it. As he was making his way back, Hiruzen found out. As some days had passed, Hiruzen was devastated despite everything. As he was going to take a few of the soldiers and go to Uza himself. As Danzo told him that he shouldn't do this now, as he was just messing up the war, but Hiruzen did not care. Uza was your allies. As he made his way there. Meanwhile, Naruto arrived to see it. Chaos and destruction. As he lost it. The pain, the grief, the agony. It was just too much. As he searched, he searched. But there was no one alive. He couldn't find a single person. As he slaughtered all the remaining members there. As Naruto was confused. How could you let this happen? He was angry. He was violent. As it broke him. Since he came to this plant, he was looking for a new start. A fresh start in everything and he had locked away his real identity of who he was and right now it was resurfacing as Naruto Osusuke once again was gonna emerge 
and he was gonna wreak havoc and chaos. So yeah guys, so it's basically that's what I thought you guys can switch your cards so please check it out for yourself. So it's the beginning of this new episode. It has been a couple of days. That is why only he scoff. As that creature, that black creature has assured them that Naruto would attack and they would have to defend themselves against him. But Oniki realized that that guy was just a big coward. For him to walk inside of Kumo and attack the Raikagi in his own village, proving how weak Kumo has gotten. The villages weren't allied, they just came together so that they could destroy Kanoha and Uzu. And once this partnership was over, he was gonna go after them as well, as he smirked to himself. He was at this village in the moment as he was currently at one of the posts where the command central were for the war. As things were getting bad despite the destruction of the Uzumakis, Kanoha was still putting up a value in fight with the sand. As he cursed at that but soon enough, things would turn their favor after all. The three of them were going to combine their forces so that they could destroy Kanoha. He had made sure that a couple of Ishinobis had remained back in the village just in case but he wasn't worried. He wasn't worried one bit. Meanwhile, it took a couple of days for them to get there. As Harrison arrived on the shore, there was no world pools. The village, the island was completely defenseless. As Harrison was walking the shores, a couple of Ishinobis behind him. He hasn't heard anything. There's been no sightings of Naruto in the battlefield. So he presumed that Naruto never left. As Harrison looked around at all the chaos and destruction at the front line, as he saw the scorched marks, the burned ground, as the front of the island was torn, as he arrived to the broken walls, the place was scorched. His ninjas behind him moved, as they were to take out any enemy forces that still relinquished themselves on the land. That was trying to squeeze it for everything that he got. He had left right after he had spoken to Danzo. He had not told Mito what happened. As he had to see the place for himself first. His ninjas had scouted the Fire Nation. There has been no sign of any other Uzumakis. That meant all of them were here. All of them had returned so that he could speak to their leader before she passed off. As Hirzen already knew that Naruto was going through a hard time with Kushina becoming sickly. As Mito was going to leave the village for a couple of months, stay with her sister until, well, the end. Because not even the greatest medics could heal her. Something that was very saddening. And now this. As Hiruzen arrived, strangely enough, there was no buildings in the center of the village. All of them were parted to one side. It seems like some unnatural force had pushed them away. Because in the center was hundreds, hundreds of graves. As Harrison came to a stop, there he was. As his clothes were covered in nothing but mud, his long white hair was dirty to the point of looking like he was black from a distance away. His hands were caked up with dry mud on it. He was unmoving and unblinking. He was just sitting there. Rain had fallen and the mud had splashed on him but he was just there. It seems like he hadn't moved for days now. As Harrison stepped forward, stopping his ninjas in their tracks, it seems like Naruto dealt with all the forces that were here. As Harrison stepped forward as he came to a stop a few feet behind Naruto, I'm sorry, he said. That was the only thing that he could muster up to say. Him and Naruto were never really friends. They never really got along because of their different beliefs. Naruto believing that this, this war it doesn't concern him at all. But the situation now, it was bad. Despite everything, Naruto did not move or say anything. He was just sitting there. As Harrison went quiet for a moment, unsure what to say to someone who just lost everything, he knew of their unborn child, and that was taken away. But then he suddenly spoke, as he kind of surprised Harrison. Where were the ninjas that were always at the border? Naruto asked. As Harrison knew that he would ask about that. If those ninjas were still there, they would have seen the attack coming. And they would have warned Kanoha. And probably, Uzo wouldn't have been destroyed. But, this was not only his fault. As right now his mind, upon what Naruto said to him on that day, 
when he arrived towards the Brahmin's grave. It came out. He didn't mean for any way of causing her to any more pain now, but it just did. I had to move them. The war was getting hectic. I asked for your assistance, but you told me that this doesn't concern you. If you had just helped the village, perhaps none of... Harrison couldn't get to finish that sentence as his throat was grabbed and he was picked off the ground. All these ninjas moved, but then they felt it. Harrison was gasping to breathe, but he felt it as well. This couldn't be possible. Harrison had felt the power of a tail beast before, and he felt the corrupt, devious chakra that was just vile and ravish. But this, this chakra was calm, but it was the potency of it and the amount. Harrison could feel no end into this chakra that was boiling like a storm. As his ninjas were frozen in their tracks, highly capable Jonins had to come to a stop. Their fear, despite their Hokage being holed up in here like that, their fear refused them from moving a single inch forward. As Harrison looked towards Naruto as he saw Naruto's eyes, despite the whiteness in his eyes, the man looked broken. His face was stained, like he had been crying a lot. As Harrison looked down towards him, and all he felt for Naruto was pity right now, after everything that he has lost. As Naruto released him, as Harrison dropped to his feet, gasping as he held on to his throat, Naruto did not apologize as he looked up in the sky. The rush of chakra then stopped as ninjas gasped, able to breathe now. They moved towards Harrison's side as Naruto looked up in the sky. Harrison raised his hand, stopping them from doing anything to Naruto. Well, he wasn't sure that they could. It wasn't my place said Naruto as he looked up to the heavens. I came here for a first start, intervening in your wars. I told Hoshiram and Toburama that from the beginning. They understood. The only thing I wanted was a first start. It was up to them to do as they pleased, said Naruto, as he kept on looking up in the heavens. The rain started to fall once again, as the mud was so thick on him, it wasn't even washing off. As his hair got damp, it was soaked as it ran down to his back, Harrison did not move. As he finally stood back up after holding onto his throat, is there any left near the axe? Did any of them get through to land the fire? I'm afraid not, Harrison said. It wasn't wise to further break someone while they were down like this, especially with someone like his power. As Naruto sighed, he then reached into his rope as he pulled out two scrolls. As he handed them to Harrison, Harrison took them and then asked, What are these? A message to Mito and Snabby. Don't tell me that you're planning on doing what I think you're gonna do. You will die, Harrison said. Harrison didn't know who Nerta was. Hoshram and Tobarama did not know where Nerta came from. The only person that knew was Kagamai and Kushina. I knew the best friend and that was Takashi. Everyone else did not know. Despite his will of power, Harrison knew what Naruto was going to do. He was going to go after the nations and he was going to die. You might be strong, but going up against the three nations, it will certainly mean your death. Mito, when she finds out about this, it's going to be hard. Snaddy, they're going to need you. Come back with me. How can I face them? said Naruto. Mito know how strong I am. How can I face her? To tell her that I let her sister, her entire clan die. Because I wasn't there. How can I face her ever again? Once again his emotions surface. He was never used to these kind of things. So he didn't know how to express himself properly. And it was breaking him down inside piece by piece. Harrison, you're wrong, said Naruto. All this time, going by the name Naruto, Uzumaki, which I'm not. I am the son of Kaguya Osusuke, Ishiki Osusuke, and I am Naruto Osusuke, he said. Harrison and all of the ninjas were blown away as a tremendous force sent your body sailing 
Pearson had to flip in mid-air several times as he came to a stop, still clutching onto the scrolls. As there was a massive explosion of just raw, untamed chakra that swallowed the area. But the land, the land was untouched and it was bathed in a warm. Pearson felt it, the warm sensation. And then it was followed by a hot searing fire. Just his presence alone was bending the atmosphere. The rain stopped falling. The wind stopped blowing. The earth went calm. As Harrison looked up in the sky, as Naruto was standing there, he wasn't moving, he was just standing directly in the sky. He had changed. He was no longer the same man that Harrison was looking at before. At this moment, his eyes were different. That was the first thing that Hirutan noticed. His once clear eyes at Ibiakan were different. They now had six triangles pointing towards the center. The triangles were black, but inside of the eyes, it was golden. A golden light that just seemed to glow ominously. Both of his eyes were like that, and in his forehead, a Byakugan opened up. His horns extended. As Naruto stood there in mid-ear, his clothing was different. He was wearing an open-up shirt. Several commas was running down his chest going down, straight towards his stomach. They were also on his hands. The open-up shirt was grey. It had a golden view at the top. It was like a coat going down. He was wearing white pants. Nothing on his feet. And he was clean. All the dirt that was previously on him was now gone. He looked back down towards Hirzen, and Hirzen felt it an unholy amount of power. Tell them, I'm sorry, said Naruto. And with that, he burst off with tremendous speed, leaving behind a shock Hirzen and the others that couldn't fathom the amount of power, amount of chakra that this one being possessed. Hirzen had no idea who Kaguya Osusuke was, or Ishiki Osusuke. Or who Naruto Osusuke was. His name was Naruto Uzumaki. As Hirsen had no idea what was going on there. But for one thing certain, this power Hirsen did not know. He did not know if Naruto was going to crush all the nations or if he was going to die. But this power was surely something immense. Time skip. The right Tagi. Unlike the teacher Tagi who had left this village at this crucial time. Just because it has been a few days since the attack on Ozu. Some of their ninjas had returned and they knew that Ozu was destroyed. But the remaining ninjas that were there to bring back anything that were valuable had not returned. That is why the Raikage had made sure to have a large portion of his force protect his village including the A-Tail Jinjuliki. The A-Tail was currently residing a man. His name was Blue Bee. He had green hair mixed with white, a strange purple marking going down over the side of one of his eyes, a katana resting on his back, followed by his acquaintance, the two-tail holder, the one that was responsible in bringing destruction to Uzo because each of the nations had sent one of their Jinjulikis. It was a woman. Her name was Yumi. She had light brown hair. She had green eyes. They were the guardians of Kumo and they were going to keep the village safe. So they were there just in case anything happened. As the right Hage had stayed in his village, he was giving it some time before he decided to, well, partake in any part of this war. Because right now, the last time that man walked into his village, and they were unable to stop him. This time though, he wouldn't allow that to happen. After all, who wouldn't be angry that their home just got completely destroyed and their wife killed? Meanwhile, at the borders, because it was wartime, the borders were being watched. As the security was tight, a horde of ninjas all spread out across the mountain valley. One man was marching towards them. The sensor ninja dropped towards ground. Hey, Ayo, what's wrong? The man started to scream as he gripped his head tightly. As the sensor ninja had his senses out pack, the sense anything that might come from any different direction. But yet, he felt what was coming and it was, it was too much. Blood was coming from his eyes and his nose. As the man was screaming, 
Hey, someone's coming. Bring him back to the village. The one of the squad ordered as he quickly got him away from there. As a group of ninjas all flashed forward and came to a stop. Halt! As they pulled out their weapons, it was war time. They just wanted to make sure that he wasn't from any of the nations that Kumo was currently allied with. See no sign on him, no insignia, but the Tishikage are. The Mizugai could have hired someone. What is your purpose of being here? As Nurka looked up, meanwhile at the village, a couple minutes later, the right Hage was in the office when somebody burst inside. Sir, someone is coming towards the village. He slaughtered all the outside defenses. They can't stop him. As the right Hage quickly got up to his feet. Is it him? I don't know, sir. As the man had come here quickly to inform the right Hage. It had to be him. He's here for revenge. Get me Blue B and Yumi immediately. At once. As the man quickly flashed off. Not wasting any time. So he's finally come. The right Kage burst right through his window as he landed and started to move. Father, as he landed beside him, he's here. Said A as he looked towards his father. Yes. Let's make sure he doesn't enter this village. As A nodded, as him and his father made their way out there, they were intercepted by Blue B and Yumi. We have to stop him before he enters the village. You two, no holding back. Don't give him the chance to do anything, just rip him apart. Yes sir, the both of them said. As Blue B and Yumi move, their speed increased because of the output of Chakra. As they arrive, leaping over the gates. As Yumi looked over towards Blue B, you think this guy is as strong as they say? It doesn't matter. We are Kumo ninjas and it's our job to protect the village of life. I know that. I'm just wondering. Well... It's the both of us. In these war times, the power that we contain, who else could be stronger? Yeah, you're right, she said. As she showed her fans, let's rip them apart. Screaming picked up on their ears as they made their way deep into the mountain rocky side. When they arrived, they saw Naruto as he snapped at Kunoichi's neck like it was nothing. As Naruto looked up, Yumi moved forward in a quick burst, her nails extended. As she was about to slash him across his throat. As Naruto grabbed her hand. She did not waste some time as she lit her right eye against her body. Got in flame. Flame lit up across her skin but then it was all absorbed. Her eyes went wide as her face was grabbed. And smashed down into the ground. Blue Bee eyes went wide when he noticed. That her face was squashed completely. The man stepped back in utter shock and surprise as Nurka looked towards him as a staff materialized in his hand and he threw it. Blue B jumped to the side. Immediately his body got cloaked as four tears appeared behind him as they started to increase as a strange bone substance came on his shoulder. Meanwhile, the body of Yumi as the Nebe Jinjuliki was no more. As Manatabi inside of her broke free out of the seal as she was gonna reform. As Blue Bee moved, Lariat as he moved to take off Naruto's head, as he crashed right into Naruto but yet, Naruto did not move a budge. All of the chakra was absorbed from Blue Bee, as he was returned back to his normal state. As Naruto reeled his head back and smashed it into Blue Bee's skull, the man went dizzy as he staggered back in pain. As he couldn't see, when his eyes snapped back into focus, two fingers pierced into his eye sockets. He cried. He tried to punch Naruto, but that staff ran through his stomach as Naruto ripped out his eye socket before slamming him into the ground. As Naruto held up his hand, three rods appeared as he dropped them, pierced him through his skull, his chest, and his stomach. The rods enlarged as it ripped his body apart. As the power out of him, emerge and the ATLs was going to reform. Naruto did not stop as he kept on walking straight towards the village. The right Kage was a few meters up. The man was shocked when he saw Naruto. Huh, how? The right guy couldn't believe that this was happening. He, he wasn't supposed to be here so quickly. 
Where are they, Dry Kage? Ask. As Naruto finally spoke, you mean your pawns. I killed them. As A pulled out a blade. As his hand was slightly shaken because of the uneasiness that he was feeling. The right Kage was shocked. How could someone take down two Jinjuki so quickly? That's impossible. Lightning take the right Kage's body. As his hair start to frazzle. As the man moved. As he pointed his one finger towards Naruto. At the last moment he twisted his body to catch Naruto off guard. And slashed behind Naruto. As he brought on a solid kick. Naruto raised his hand and caught the kick to the ground. Exploded under Naruto's feet. The right Kage twisted his leg and slammed it into Naruto's face. While he tried to, a black rod blocked it and teared through the right Kage's leg. The man did not cry in pain though, as he brought his hand down in a chopping motion to sever Naruto's head. But Naruto was gone. As Aiden turned as he swung his blade, as Naruto caught it and snapped it, and he kept on walking, the right Kage was confused. He was ignoring him. Where are you going? He asked. You think I came here for you? No. I came here to take everything from you, said Naruto. I won't let you, A said as he moved forward. As he was going through Einstein, but then, when he looked up, he came face to face with Naruto. A stopped immediately. As he looked into the eyes of someone who was going to kill him, as Naruto grabbed him by the throat and picked him up off the ground, he felt all. Of his chakra leave his body. He was frightened, he was shocked, he couldn't even speak at the amount of power that was pressing down on his heart. He couldn't even breathe. He was afraid. Afraid. As Naruto then tossed him into the rock platform, his body breaking through it as the rocks collapsed on top of him. As the right taggy eyes went wide, seeing his son being tossed like that as he moved. As his body twisted as he launched. A brutal kick towards Naruto's skull, who slapped it away and stabbed a rod into his leg. The right Kage wins as he raised his arm as Naruto dodged and stabbed a rod into it. The right Kage turned as Naruto slammed his hand on the man's shoulder, dropping him into the ground and stabbed two rods into his shoulder. The right Kage stood there as he couldn't move. He could no longer feel his chakra, his light and around him vanished. What the hell? I warned you, said Naruto as he lowered himself, as he got an eye level with the right Kage. Yet you still, you still decide to interfere. And now, as Naruto raised his hand, the right Kage was trapped as several irons appear on him as he caged him into a box. What are you going to do, the right Kage asked. The same thing you did. As Naruto moved as a black rod box, dragged the right Kage with him. As Naruto then flew, hundreds of jutsus rained towards him from lightning to fire to wind as they tried to take him out of the sky. But this strange force just absorbed it all. As Naruto raised his hands to the heaven, as he raised his hands straight up, used all the chakra that he just gave him together into a giant black ball of death. The right tiger eyes went wide before he could say anything, Naruto dropped it. Right in the center of the village. The explosion was not normal. Screams died out rather quickly as the explosion swallowed up everything nearby. Ripping apart buildings. Tearing down giant mountain structures. Buildings were destroyed. Ninjas were turned to ash. The few civilians that got underground. They were the only ones that survived. The remaining ninjas that were there to fight. They were all gone. Buildings, everything was just wiped out in the blink of an eye. As the right Kage watched nothing but destruction upon his village. The man was shocked to his core as he couldn't believe this. Who had he tampered with? He then felt his throat grab as he was brought out of the box. As Naruto was holding him by the throat. It was then that he finally looked into Naruto's eyes. I warned you but yet. You still decide to interfere. And for that your people died, said Naruto. As he looked towards the mass destruction, this was what he was known for. This was who he truly was. The one that brought death and destruction 
the one that absorbed planets, slaughtered hundreds, thousands. And now that Kushner was gone, there was nothing holding back. That part of him, that love, the enjoy in the blissful death of others, the suffering and the arrogance that came with it to know that he was beyond any one of them and they couldn't do him a damn thing. The Reich Hagel was still unable to respond. He just looked at the destruction until he felt something stab him right through the stomach as he fell from the sky. Meanwhile, he pulled himself right out of the rubble as he rushed towards his village after hearing that massive explosion that shook some of the rubble off of him. As he had woken up, he didn't die. His left arm was broken though badly and his side, it was bleeding badly as he rushed towards his village only to see nothing but destruction. It was then that he saw his father lying there on the ground. Father! As he rushed towards his father with quick speed. As his father was there, lying on the ground. My son, you're alive. That was all the man said as he tried to pick him up but his arms. Nothing was there. His father turned into ash. And he was gone. As he saw the retreat in the form of Naruto leaving the village. He couldn't say anything or do anything. There was no one around. His people, his village, was destroyed. Time skip. Hidden stone. Hey, what the hell is that? What are you talking about? Look up. Must be a bird or something. It's coming down. Boom! The explosion shattered a couple of buildings as Naruto dropped from the heavens. As he stood there in the destruction that he caused, civilians started to flee. They started to run for their life. The ninjas that weren't affected by the explosion quickly moved forward. Their kunai's raised as they toss it, not even hesitating to move. As Naruto waved his hand as they were blown away with nothing but ease. Where's your Kagi? said Naruto. As a man leaped forward the blade, as he brought it down towards Naruto's neck, as Naruto grabbed his neck and snapped it. Where's your Kage? he said. We're not telling you crap. You stepped into the wrong village as the man went through head side. Earth style, earth spikes as he slammed his head down. Earth spikes rose from the earth and went after Naruto, who simply flew up into the air. It doesn't matter. As he held his hand together, before releasing them as he gripped mid-ear and gripped the other side and gripped left and right. As he took in a deep breath, gravitational pull he said. As he did exactly what he said as he pulled everything towards him, the siblings that were running were surprised when their bodies were yanked back towards center. Screams of panic and chaos could be heard as everyone lost mobility over their movements. They couldn't stop themselves as they were yanked back right towards the center where Naruto was. And when they were almost about to touch him, he released it. As it wasn't normal as the explosion that traveled outwards, the ground was rooted up, buildings were obliterated, the entire village trembled and shook as it was blown apart from the center going straight out as Naruto obliterated everything around him nothing but death and destruction bodies were torn into half some of them were slammed into the pavement of the road but then he did it again as a few that remained were crushed under the weight of everything that rushed over them tearing their bodies to pieces by the time he was finished they were all dead as Naruto stood there in the mix and destruction of all of it not even a look of sympathy on his face as he walked forward, as he just moved on, not even caring, they all deserved it after what they did, they all deserved to die as he flew off, leaving behind nothing but death and destruction in his wake. If someone was lucky to survive, everything would match up from what happened to Kumo and what happened to Stone and what was going to happen to Kieran. It didn't take long for Naruto to arrive to the eastern area where there was nothing but mist. The mist was saturated with chakra, and as he walked through it, it started to be absorbed. All of that mist started to leave the entire village. The shinobi started to panic when he realized the mist was vanishing completely, as this had never happened before. They were confused, they were shocked. 
Something flew over their heads, the one that were at the borders. As they couldn't stop it, it was too fast. They started to rush back to the village post to tell them that something was coming rather quickly. But it didn't take too long for that something to stop. An explosion went off. The Mizukagi was quickly alerted as the man came outside. He brought his two most powerful fighters, the holders of the three, and six tails. As the Mizukagi arrived to see destruction, the mist was not there so he could see everything fully cleared. In front of his village, bodies lied, ripped apart, strained black rods impaling skulls and chests. As he saw, the man standing there. Naruto Uzumaki, I presume, he said. At least you're here for your village, said Naruto. What's that supposed to mean, said Mizukaki. Seems that the Tishikaki was not there for the stone, said Naruto. The Mizukaki narrowed his eyes. So I'm guessing that you're here for revenge. It's not obvious, said Naruto. You mistakenly did something that will cost you and your village. Well, I can't allow you to do that. That is why. Do not hesitate. Take him down. The moment Naruto said that, the two Jinjuliki shot forward. They transform. As they had more grasp over their power as Jinjulikis. Hard training. As they were able to control the farm, not for too long, but they were able to. The giant, strange slug appeared. Releasing strange slime. As Naruto looked towards... The Rukibai. It was being controlled, he could see that very clearly. As this person had the will to control it, the seal was well perfectly intact. The three tailed turtle then emerged. Acid and water was sent towards Naruto as he raised his hand and absorbed all the chalk from both attacks. Before sending it back, a wave of corroded water slammed into the two beasts. Knocking them away. But that didn't keep them down as they started to charge. Biju bombs. They were told not to hesitate and worse. They were pointing towards the opposite direction of the village. They could go all out. As they launched them. As Naruto jumped forward. Before he created two staff and threw them. It sliced right through the Biju bombs. Destabilizing them as they went off in a wild explosion. Forcing Mizukagi to be shielded by the three tail turtle as the explosion went off, booming, tearing apart the frontal area of the village. Shinobis of all kinds start to flock towards the Mizukagi position when the smoke finally died down. As the slug and the turtle looked around as they could not see anything or anyone anywhere. He must have got caught up in the explosion and died. The moment they said that though, two giant boxes, it was black with red markings over it dropped from the heavens and obliterated the boat of them. They were squashed. The Mizukage stood there shocked as he was waiting for them to get up but their bodies were squashed. The chakra broke apart as they were going to be reformed. The Mizukage watching utter shock. They were dead. He then turned the staff connected with his face as it broke his jaw as he was sent sailing. He broke through several of the buildings as he came to a stop right inside the midst of the village. Panic started to ensue as Naruto watched a massive wave of water came towards him. His body started to glow red as he started to twist the fire chakra inside his system. He then opened his mouth as a fire unlike Anything anyone's ever seen before overtook the water and incinerated it into smoke. The ninjas scream in pain as their bodies were turned to dust, boiled and disintegrated by the flames that rip at their skin. As Naruto moved, as he noticed all the water around Kiri, he was going to take care of that. As he flew up to the heavens, the Mizukagi was helped up by a few of his shinobis. It was then that he saw Naruto in the midst of the heavens as Naruto his hands locked together before he opened it. A small flame, a small tiny flame was right in his palm as it started to grow in size before it stopped 
at about a tennis ball size. It then started to turn red until it turned white as a quantity of a thousand jonies of chocolate was poured into that ball of flames. Before Newton dropped it, the water style users went through hand sign, water style, water wall. That was all they managed to say as the water did not come up because the fire incinerated everything around. As the water was turned into steam, the eastern border, the sea border was turned into steam. The fire was too intense. It did not even touch the ground yet and people started to melt. They scream. Houses were turned to dust. The Mizukai could only watch as his body was melting away. He couldn't believe something like this was happening. He had agreed to take care of Naruto Uzumaki and the Uzumakis. But it seems that strange plant man tricked him into something that none of them were ready for. And if this was happening here, then it must be happening to the rest of the... That was his last thoughts. He wanted to say nation but he couldn't get to as he was turned into bones and then into dust. As Naruto stood there, like a god, in the midst of nothing but blackened earth, as all the water, the sea water had been turned into dust, gone, the steam rose up in the sky. Naruto was not moving, as he just looked at the destruction that he caused, all of them deserve it. He sat down, as he just looked around, he was done. He knew that he was going to kill them the moment that he saw what they did. He knew that he was going to make them pay. But after that, what? As Naruto pressed a seal that was on his chest and brought out something. The flower that he brought back to give Kushina was in the seal. It was in a strange crystallized ball. Protected by the three day time limit. It was still like that forever. If it was taken out though, it would be gone. It would wither away and die. As Naruto crafted a strange black metal and looped it and pressed it into the crystal as he placed her on his neck. A gem. A memory. As he then got back to his feet, he was tired mentally. A bit physically but barely. He still had quantities of chocolate left. After all these years of not fighting and all these ninjas sending their attacks towards him, he could simply absorb their chakra. His body was flush with chakra, so much so that he could destroy this entire world. He could go around and just cause nothing but chaos and destruction. But he would not. He did what he wanted to do. And he was going to stay here for much longer. He could not face Mito. After she hear what he did, if he had the power to destroy those nations, why couldn't he stop them from destroying the Uzumakis? He had searched. He searched all the possible routes they could take, but none of them were there. His precious wife, his unborn child, they were all gone. Leaving him with nothing but the memories of them. Her sweet, beautiful face. Her luscious red hair. They were all gone. As he flew off. His body started to return back to normal as he flew. As his horns vanished. His eyes. The eye in his forehead close, as he then touched down towards an empty spot where he just lie there, looking up towards the heavens. He would no longer stay on this earth, he would leave. After all in the beginning he was just drifting through space, but the pain it was still there. Never experienced something like this before, it was still haunting him, to know that he lost someone, lost someone that he loved so much. As you remember the first time when Kagama invited him inside the village, as he couldn't believe that, despite everyone else, this old man was being so kind. Old man. She was always angry at him for calling her father old man, not giving his proper respect. <laughs> it brought a tear to his eye which he wiped away. I'm sorry, he says. He looked up in the heavens. I'm truly, truly sorry. Meanwhile, Harrison couldn't stay too long as he was currently in the boat. There was nothing there left except for the graves. As he wasn't going to disturb the Uzumakis, rest in peace. He was sure that Mito would want to come here. Naruto had named all the graves. That is why he was so muddy for the last couple of days. He buried every single body that he found and named all of them. 
Even the bodies that he did not own, he placed a grave for them. In the center was his wife. And a small grave to the side to his child, his unborn child, which he lost. If he felt that way, imagine how Mitu was going to feel that her sister, her entire clan was wiped out. This was a big setback for Kanoha, but countless of people, countless innocents died because of this war torn world. Here is in Sai in this me. And this war was not going to stop. This war was not going to stop. He was also worrying about his three students that he had taken on. As they are going to go out there in the back of field as well. Aruchimaru. He was a prodigy. And there was Navi. She had it in her blood to become someone great. But there was Jaraya the goof. The funny one. But he had something about him that Hirzen was going to nurture and bring out. Just like how his sensei took him on as students, he was doing the same thing. But this war was not giving him enough time to see his students. But soon enough they will have to join the battlefield. He sighed. When were things going to end? When? Was the world going to finally be at peace? He did not know. But this was giving him more drive to do so. To find a way to bring peace. First thing first, he has to talk to Mito. He has to break the news to her. Keeping this away from her too long was just selfish on his part. He wished that Naruto was going to be there to just be there for Mito, but he wasn't. Given circumstances, he could understand. Given his power, he wasn't able to save them. He probably thought that Mito would be angry about that, but she wouldn't. She would just want someone at her side. But Naruto, it's not like Hiroshima could exactly force him to do what he didn't want to do. As Hirson just sat on the boat looking up into the bass, large water, as he went into deep thought. Meanwhile, how is everything going, said Danto. As there was a woman standing there in a white coat. So far, she stayed with my lord. She was waking up but I placed her back in an Hindu's coma. The machines will keep her body healthy until it is time. But her lungs... Her kidneys are slowly failing. As you can see, I had to bring in the extra machines. I'm afraid she won't wake up back. What about the child, Danzo said. The child will survive, my lord. Ah, said Danzo with a smile. That is all that he hear about this woman. Was a means to an end. But her child. Having a young Uzumaki on his side. Soon enough, Mito was going to get old. And in doing so, the nine tails would have to be removed from her. And he will have the perfect, he will have the perfect one to place it inside of. Well, he will have to make some adjustments so no one knew. Like, take away the signature Uzumaki symbol or here, the red here, into something different. Perhaps brown or dark, yes, black, and the shadows. Donzo knew that he was playing a risky game here, but it was something that he had to do to make sure that Kanoha stays on top. After all, Naruto was powerful, yes, but Donzo didn't believe that Naruto could face off against the entire three nations and survive. He would surely die. So for now, he would just continue with his plan, and Hirzen was too soft-hearted to do certain things, that is why. He could not tell Hirzen about this. He had to keep the secret. Time skip. As Hirzen finally arrived, as the door was open, Ah, Hirzen said Mito. What brings you here, she said. As Hirzen was holding two scrolls in his hand. Hirzen Sensei is the voice. As the man heart pain as he saw Snaddy with her small little brother, Nawaki, in her arms. He looked away, feeling pain and regret. Mito, there's something I have to tell you in private. Yeah, sure. Come on in, she said. As she could sense his chakra already, it was sad, grieving. Like he had lost something. Pain, it was not pain on him but towards the one he was speaking to which was her. Harrison, what's going on as she took him to the other room. He handed her the scrolls. It's about Uzu. Meanwhile, as Naruto woke up, he had to move where he had landed. He just lied there. As he woke up, as he got to his feet, he had stayed here long enough. He had already made up his mind. He was a failure. And why would he show his face to them after all he did? 
just letting the village be burned and destroyed. Same like when he was an Osusuke. He was kicked from the clan. He no longer had a home there. And he was no longer Uzumaki here. He was once again Naruto. Someone that was going to drift endlessly until he died. As he flew off, his speed breaking through Earth atmosphere. As he never looked back. But he clutched onto the necklace that was around his neck. It was a reminder. Something that will make him never forget. Yes, he will never forget. But guys, we end up so right here. If you want to see next person do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on the bell notifications to be posted. Remember to share to all of your friends in social media platform. And also, guys, stay in tune for the rest of what is coming your way over in Anime King. If you're new, yes, I indeed have three channels Anime King, Anime King 2, Anime King 3, which I post what you find every single day. And also, I post a brand new episode over in Making 2 of What If Naruto was put through hell and adopted by the right Kagi. So go ahead and enjoy that, guys. And remember, if you're new, to go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the Making family. And thank you for all of your help and support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new. I'll be replying talking back to all of you. So, yeah, without further ado, I'm out for now. See you guys soon. And remember to turn on that bell notification, stay posted, and see exactly when I post. But see you guys. Peace.